hear your favorite NFL legends sharing their stories and insights every week right here on Thursday Night Tailgate with Chris Mascaro and Bob Lazari. Take it away, guys. There's no way out. All right, now back in making his 12th appearance with us here on Thursday Night Tailgate is TNT Hall of Famer, Louisiana Sports Hall of Famer, State of Missouri Sports Hall of Famer, and former Rams, Bears, Broncos, uh, and Chiefs wide receiver Eddie Kennison. And Eddie has become such a cherished friend here on the show, and I bet Eddie doesn't remember this, but he first joined us on episode number six of this show, almost seven years ago to the day, oh, by the way, back on October 27th of 2011. No doubt thinking to himself, you know, who booked me on this show with, you know, two guys I never heard of on a show I never heard of, but he was kind enough to do it, and we've been blessed to be friends ever since. Eddie was a great player both in college at LSU and in the NFL. Here are just a couple of the highlights from his time at LSU. He caught at least one pass in each of his last 31 regular season games there, he was a two-time recipient of the AT&T Long Distance Award in 1994, in particular for his 100-yard punt return against Mississippi State. He, was an all, he also was a member of LSU's 4x100-meter relay team that finished second in the nation in the national championship in 1995, and he was a four-time All-American in track. With the Chiefs, Eddie still ranks eighth all-time in receiving yards and ninth in receiving touchdowns. He also does great work raising money for lupus research with his foundation, and we are thrilled he is back with us again tonight here on Thursday Night Tailgate. Hey, Eddie, Chris, and Bob, thanks for coming back on the show. Hey. Chris and Bob, good to be back with you, brothers. How are you guys this evening? Oh, that was we're great. fantastic. Thanks. Thank you, Eddie. So, Eddie, That's I want to start our good. time with you tonight by getting your thoughts on your alma mater LSU. Huge game coming up against Alabama in Death Valley so your thoughts, can your boys pull this one off? Oh man, absolutely we can pull it off uh, you know, it, it won't be a, a, a walk in the park uh, but let's understand, Alabama is uh, beatable just like anyone else and uh, I think with Alabama uh, going into Tiger Stadium uh, you know, the energy will be there. The players will, uh, for, for the Tigers will, will play off of that energy that's in Tiger Stadium, brother. And, uh, absolutely we can pull it off. Alabama, you know, even though they, they are an absolutely great ball club, you know, we got the talent that can, uh, pull this, that, that ball game off in a couple of weeks. So, Eddie, you know, 93 wasn't the best season for you guys when you were at LSU, but you did, Upset number five, Alabama, in Tuscaloosa. So that's got to be a happy memory for you. What do you remember about that game? Um, well, I knew going in, you know, that it was, you know, Alabama has always had a fantastic football team. And, and you know, 95 was no different. Those guys, they were playing good football then. And, uh, you know, just to go into Tuscaloosa, and, you know, because they, they didn't think we had a shot to win in Tuscaloosa. And, it's just about, you know, persevering and going in and, and taking care of business. And uh, that's what I remember. I, you know, our plane ride home that evening was fantastic. You know, the guys were awesome. Uh, and it was a good win coming out of Tuscaloosa. So looking back over your college career, was that the biggest win? Oh, no. I would probably say our uh, my Mississippi State by Michigan State uh, Independence Bowl game was probably the biggest game. Because uh, it was the first time we had played in a bowl game, and obviously we we beat uh, Michigan State pretty good in Independence Bowl, so that was probably the big. Five questions for Eddie. Always a pleasure to speak with you, Eddie. Uh, I uh, I want to ask you about your rookie year in '96, Eddie. Uh, you know, we we the game has changed so much, and you are known for having a lot of speed. And you you walk into the uh, training camp, you had guys like Lawrence Phillips and. JT Thomas, some guys that can, you know, definitely run. And, and back then, Tony, I'm sure Eddie back in the day, people said, you know, who's this fastest guy in this team? Were you guys like allowed to have like, uh, some kind of races between you to kind of, uh, throw your testosterone around back in the day? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, in 96, uh, there was, uh, unequivocally no question who the fastest man on the field. Uh, I mean, we had some fast guys now that, that I played with, you know, in all of the teams. And, uh, but, you know, in, in that year, um, uh, it was, it was no question. 
And Eddie, I want to ask you, I was thinking about guys, speed demons who played both on grass and, and turf and things like that. It brought me to thinking about the footwear you guys had back in the day. And, you know, if guys had a lot of quirks about footwear and, and what did you do uh, as far as did you have any special footwear and the difference of, uh, of uh, shoes that you wore both on grass and turf? Well, you know, we didn't have like, uh, you know, my, uh, my rookie season, well, my first three seasons in the National Football League, uh, I was with Reebok. And ultimately I, I changed from Reebok, uh, to Nike. And then I was with Nike the rest of my career. Um, uh, you know, at that time, you know, Nike just made a, a, a shoe that fit my foot and I was more comfortable, uh, in that shoe at that particular time. Uh, and over the course of the years, obviously, you know, all of the brands, uh, you know, they continue to um, uh, find technology and find things that uh, make their shoes uh, wearable and that will last uh, and, and that are comfortable in the game. And uh, obviously the technology then from now is totally different. Uh, but, you know, at the time, you know, I did find a, a nice pair of cleats that, that fit my, my foot. And uh, that I was comfortable in, and I wore pretty much my entire career. Eddie, I also want to get your thoughts on the Chiefs, and and I think a lot of people are reserving their excitement for the Chiefs because we've seen this movie before, right? We've seen them get off to a hot start and then sort of stumble coming home. Do you think this season is going to be different? Or are you uh, like some of us cautious, you know, sort of wait and see on how they finish out the season? Well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always excited. It's, it's, it's exciting to see our, our ball club, uh, playing the way they're playing and, uh, and playing at a high level. And, you know, each week, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of a, for me personally, and I can probably speak for every guy in that locker room, even though I don't talk to them every day, but for me, and I can speak for most of them that, um, uh, I expect them to win. That's just how good uh, of a talent uh, a ball club that they are, talent of a ball club that they are. And I just I expect them to win, and I'm sure they expect the same thing out of each other and uh, the organization. So um, I'm excited. You know, I, I, I can't wait for, you know, Sundays to come around so I can see these guys play football. You know, uh, I'm not, you know, I'll, if, if, if the great thing happens where they make it to the Super Bowl, I can say I'm, I was super excited in week one when they started winning. And if they don't make it, I'm still excited because I can't worry about what, what the, the, the past was or what may happen in the future. I can concentrate on one week at a time and get super excited about that week and enjoy the outcome as the outcome have been, you know, pretty good, you know, the first seven weeks. And, Eddie, Pat Mahomes sure does look like a franchise quarterback that Chiefs fans can get real excited about for many years to come. Your thoughts on what you've seen so far from him? Oh, brother, i tell you what. Um, I was very reserved about Pat uh, just because, I, you know, I didn't see a whole lot of Pat play at, uh, uh, you know, at Tech. Uh, you know, I didn't know a whole lot about him. Um, and, you know, with him, you know, starting, or not starting, but playing behind Alex Smith. Uh, and then when Alex left, and then I just had some reservations because I didn't know how much he knew of the game. Uh, and, you know, I said this before that when he first got the, when, when Alex left and Pat got the job, the only thing that scared me about who he was uh, was really understanding uh, the defense. You know, can he pick up the defense, what they're giving him, and, you know, if, you know pre and post uh, read of the defense and being able to make a decision based on what he's getting with him being so young in the National Football League. That's the only thing that really kind of made me reserve about Pat. I saw his talent in the preseason. We saw him start, I think it was week uh, 14 or 15 of last year against Denver. He, he proved to have great talent and played well. And we saw that, the, the, you know, the young man, he can throw the ball, you know, a half a mile on his knees. And um, he just have a great talent. And uh, I tell you what, uh, I don't have any more reservations about who he is as a quarterback and what he's becoming and uh, as a as a franchise quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs. 
So at least two of your former teams appear at this point to be headed for an opportunity to play in the Super Bowl, Chiefs and Rams. If we got that <laughs> matchup, which direction are you going? Oh, well, I'm Chiefs all in, brother. There's no question. I'm, I'm a Chiefs fan through and through. the majority of my career uh, in Kansas City, and uh, I just have a different level of, of love for the Chiefs. Uh, you know, I I look at all of my teams that I play for, I look at them as my kids or like my kids. You know, you, you treat them treat them different but love them the same. So, and if they played in the Super Bowl, I'd have to I have to love them the same but treat them different. And I want Kansas City to be treated a little bit better. If that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, more for Eddie. Eddie, I don't want to sound too critical about today's wide receiver, uh, and it may be unwarranted, but it just seems to me that there's there's a lot of a lot more drops than there was maybe 20 years ago. Maybe that's because they're throwing the ball now more, Eddie. We see everything on TV. I'm not sure, but is it uh, is it a thing that these guys are a little less disciplined than guys like you were coming out of college? Um. You know, I, I don't know if, if that's the case or not. Um, I know um, for sure that we had, uh, you know, in, in my playing days, we had a lot more time on the practice field. Uh, you know, the, the, the times were, uh, they weren't really governed. Um, and, you know, now, you know, the, the time on the football field, you know, they don't, they don't, get to have two days, you know, they don't, they have so much time they can only spend on the field with these certain things. Um, so is that an excuse? Could be. I don't know. Uh, but I know we had pretty much unlimited time on the football field. And, you know, we, we spent all of that time, you know, in one-on-one, you know, drills with, with our position coaches and they had different, you know, uh, you know, fundamental drills for us to do in individual segments. So, and then after practice, you know, we spent, you know, another 30 minutes, you know, catching balls off the jug. And I'm sure those guys still do it. I just think with us, we had more time on the practice field than the guys do now. So when, when you're done with practice, you're done. You're going home and, and that's pretty much it. So we, I think we just have more time. Eddie, you've got a, uh, a wonderful foundation that raises money for lupus research. Talk about the things that uh, you continue to do to try to help that cause. Yeah, so we, you know, it was, uh, uh, it's a, a deal where it's pretty much, you know, raising awareness and um, uh, in dollars for uh, lupus research. Um, you know, I think we've discussed before. You know, my wife, she was diagnosed uh, with lupus and. Uh, 2001 and, uh, you know, we continue to just, uh, um, raise awareness and raise dollars and, uh, you know, we're trying to find a cure for, uh, for lupus and, you know, that's our fight. That's been our, our deal for the, you know, the last 18 plus years. And, um, you know, and until we find a cure, um, excuse me, guys, we're just going to keep on fighting. So, Eddie, let our listeners know, how can they stay up to date with the great things that you're doing both with your foundation and then over social media and online as well? Yeah, so thank you. And, um, you know, my um, my Twitter is E. Kennison. Um, my Instagram is Eddie, I, I, I. Excuse me. And my Facebook is just Eddie Kennison. Um, and, you know, they can go on and. I request to follow and um, most requests I will I will accept. Um, you know, there's some things I look at. I make sure that you know when I'm scrolling through my uh, my social media because my kids are always look and I make sure that it's something that they can see <laughs> and and <laughs> enjoy themselves. <laughs> It's always such a joy for Bob and I to get to spend some time with you. We can't thank you enough for your kindness and your generosity over the, you know, here we are seven years later that uh, you've been a part of the show. So thank you so very much for being as great as you are. And we look forward to hopefully catching up with you again a little bit later on in the season. 
Yes, you guys are more than welcome, and uh, I appreciate every time you guys ask me to be a guest on. So you guys keep doing the great work that you're doing, spreading the word for um, athletes across the nation in all forms, uh, and you guys just do a wonderful job. So thank you guys for being awesome. Thank you. We Take appreciate care. you, Eddie. All the best you and your family. We'll catch up again soon. Thanks, brother. Thank t- same to you guys. Good night, Eddie. Good night. Eddie. That is the great Eddie Kennison. And, uh, Bob, you look at uh, Eddie's career, obviously he did – a great job at LSU. Again, a guy that's in multiple Hall of Fames, you know, in their Hall of Fame, in the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, the state of Missouri's Hall of Fame, and of course, and our guest Hall of Fame as well. But uh, a finer individual you will not find than Andy Kennison. No, Chris. And again, uh, every time his name comes up, when you tell me we're having him on the show, I just think of two words, class act. He is that and then some. And I just think he played with some teams where there were a lot of good receivers around. If this guy ever was a featured receiver, I mean, we'd be talking to a Hall of Famer right now. He was that good. But uh, I just uh, I love the man, and uh, he's been so kind to us. And uh, so, uh, again, we'll just continue to be blessed by his presence every time he uh, calls in. Yes, we will, and you're right. He is fantastic. We love him very much. All right, we've got our next guest, Tony Collins, hanging the line. We'll get to our five-star picks of the week on the other side of this quick station break. <laughs> 